Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. Tonight I was supposed to be rebuilding a spindle for the snapper mower deck, but I got a very interesting email that I read and it's from a man in South Africa. Now to me this is just mind-boggling that you can reach out to somebody that far away and help them. And this is exactly why I'm doing this, is to help people do whatever they want to do. Uh, it's not strictly snappers. Uh, if you've got something you need fixed, send me an email. Tell me what it is. Send me some pictures, and I'll see if I can help you fix it. <clears throat> but today, this email from, uh, I think his name was Wilbur. He said his son is 15. And he is really getting interested in how things work. He's becoming very mechanical. Uh, I hit that about eight years old. I started tearing things apart just to see how they work. And hey, Dad, you encourage that young man because today I get paid to do exactly that. I'm a machine repairman in a tool and die shop. I do about everything there. I do the electrical, the plumbing, <clears throat> pneumatics, hydraulics. I do some spindle repair work. We don't do a lot anymore because the machines today, they're a spindle cartridge. You can't repair them. Uh, and that's what I do, and I enjoy it. If I'm not running a machine or filling in for missing people. But today, uh, he's interested in how the snapper works. He bought an old one that has no engine and no drive disc and no clutch disc in it. So he said it's kind of hard to imagine how it really works when you can't see it. Well, I've got something here that he's going to love. Uh, I have got a, let me spin this camera on a little bit. I've got the rear case for one of my old snappers and all the parts are in it and it's probably the only one now come next spring I know one of you guys are gonna do this as soon as I say it just so you can say look I've got one but this is the only snapper right now that is powered by an electric motor this is a thousand rpm electric motor and that's so I can turn this thing on and you can see it work without, well, you couldn't run the engine with it standing up on its back like this. But we're going to show this young man how this thing works. Let me move you a little closer. Okay, let me show you what I've done to this thing and a few of the parts inside of it. For this young man's benefit, this is your drive disc. Uh, I don't have a clutch hooked up to it yet. I just have a, a pair of pliers hooked onto the yoke so I can work the clutch. I'm going to put it in neutral. This is a drive disc that is supposed to be hooked on the bottom of the engine. This is your clutch disc. This is your chain case. I have it cut open so you can see inside of it. Here's the chain, which this is pretty sloppy. It's stretched out of shape. This is your upper sprocket and your lower sprocket with your brake. I have a, uh, a brake on it. And they call these a band brake instead of this little brake that fell inside of your clutch disc assembly. I took that off. It's in one of my videos because I have this brake. And then you have your differential over here. Let me turn this a little. You can see I also cut the side of the differential case open so you can see the chain, the sprocket, the upper sprocket. This is your hex drive tube. I took the boots off so you can see the drive tube better. And this is the inside. I cut the rear, the right hand fender open so you can see inside of the differential. 
This is the uh, large gear. Now they don't have names for these gears. They just say gear, a uh, 92 tooth gear. And uh, I forget how many teeth these have on, but that's what they call these. They just go by how many teeth they have on them. Now to get this thing running, I don't know if I get any more light over here or not. Let me check. I don't know if that helps or not. You get all this extra light in here and it kind of washes everything out and just makes a big glare. But I clamped on a pair of vice grips on the yoke. Tip this down a little maybe. Because I don't have a clutch cable hooked up to it yet. I want to put a clutch cable on it and put a lever back here so I can activate the clutch uh, from the other side and you'll be able to see a little better. Now the reason I built this is if any of you guys out there are having problems, something's locked up, you're not sure how anything works, you don't know if you want to take something apart, I can show you on this and I can show you when it's running. Get my, I got a foot pedal on here to turn this thing off and on with. I got to get this foot pedal over here so I can reach it. So I'm going to start this up and we're going to put it in first gear. In fact, I think I'll put it in first gear now. Now that's in first gear. And we'll step on the pedal. Now I hope you can hear me. You can see that the hex shaft is turning. That's when the uh, drive disc starts, the clutch disc is rubbing against it. That turns the lower sprocket, which turns the chain and the upper sprocket. The up, upper sprocket is hooked on to the hex shaft, which you, now you're turning that. The power is transferred over to this upper gear or sprocket I'm sorry goes through the chain to the lower sprocket then you have a gear reduction gear over here that's turning this big one now you can see that the cluster of gears inside are not turning right now that's because both axles are spinning now if you were to go around the corner one of these axles would stop I'm gonna hang on to this one over here now you can see the gears are turning in there and this large gear is only turning one axle. When I let go of this, the gears stop, it starts turning both axles at the same time again. Or if you were to turn a, say turn a corner just slightly, one would slow down. It wouldn't totally stop. These gears would start turning but not as fast as if you locked this tire up and made a sharp curve. But that's how it works. Now to get reverse, he couldn't under, he figured out and explained to his son how you get to different speeds. Now let me come over here and see if I can do that. Shift this thing and keep it running at the same time. And have you hear me? That might be interesting. Now, these snappers, uh, they have a transmission on them, I guess if that's what you want to call this. And you can shift on the fly. And what that means is when you're driving in first gear, you don't have to push in the clutch to shift to second, or third, or fourth, or downshift. You can shift it as you're moving without using the clutch. And I'll do that in a second. Let me push the clutch in. We'll get it going. This is first gear. Now I'm going to sh just shift it in a second, and I'm not going to do anything with the clutch. That's second gear. That's third gear. That's fourth gear. Go back down. That's neutral. Now when it's in neutral,
Okay, the big bang and puff of smoke was my capacitor just shorted out and burned up. So I guess tomorrow on the way home from work, I'll pick up a new capacitor and see if I can get that running again. But I can still show you how you get reverse. Now once you're looking at this, you probably already figured it out. You push in the clutch and over here is second, I'm in uh, first gear right now, I'm in third gear. If you want reverse, you go on the other side of center on the drive disc. Now you can't see it real good. I should cut this away I guess so you can see in there better. Might do that. But you go on center on the other side of the drive disc, your clutch disc will spin the opposite direction and you'll have a reverse. And the way these things are set up, when it's in reverse and you push in your clutch, I'm going to push the, the yoke down, it's the same as pushing your clutch pedal down, it automatically pops into neutral. I don't know why they have it designed like that. Well, I guess tomorrow we'll stop and get a new capacitor. That sure surprised me. I don't know. I'm sure you heard the pop. I don't know if you've seen the big puff of smoke that filled the room. But that was, that was interesting. That's almost as good as the time I started it and it was in gear. But, you know, them things happen when you do live. There's not much you can do about it. And like I've said before, I don't edit. If you want to see my gag reel, you just seen it. But... Wilbur, I hope that helps you and your son out on understanding how this thing works. If you have any more questions, please send me another email. I'd be more than happy to help you guys. Um, I've got like 17,000 views of people watching these videos. And I've got like 140 subscribers. Come on, you guys. Push that button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It really helps me when somebody... Uh, searches the internet on how do I fix my snapper there's a ton of them out there and like my wife told me when I first started doing this she says what can you do that's not already out there and I said probably nothing but I want to do it better I want to help people fix these things I want to show you how to do it and this is about the best way I can do this. I think I am going to cut this cover, this fender off, so you can see the clutch in the drive disc a little bit better. I might take this apart tonight and take it in the shop tomorrow on the bandsaw and cut it up. <laughs> what can it hurt? <laughs> but subscribe, push that button, give me some thumbs up. Like I said, when somebody's Googling, uh, how do I repair my snapper? The more hits you have, the more thumbs up you have, the more subscribers you have, you have a better chance of finding my videos because of that. If I have like two subscribers, no thumbs up, I could have a million views, but it's not going to pull up my videos and give them to you unless you guys do that. So let's help everybody out. So I guess until next time, or until I get another capacitor for this uh, electric motor, that was interesting. I guess that's about all I can tell you tonight. Uh, tomorrow night or maybe the next, I want to rebuild that spindle. I've got the new bearings, got the old ones out, I got that spindle cleaned up. We're going to put that together next. So hang in there. Stay tuned, whatever you want to call it. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. And remember, work safe and have fun. That's what it's all about. See you soon.